think Jack Ma says it, it's very hard to work with poor people or something along those lines. And again, I'm, I'm not talking, I'm talking about my kind of previous life where even now when I meet friends that are stuck in that, uh, stuck in that sort of mindset, it's very hard to, to uh, work with them or inspire them or, or give them something that you can both benefit, like starting a project, starting a company, because they have this poor mindset, not necessarily financially poor, but they just think that you're going to trick them for, for something. Like if you oh, tell yeah. them, read a That's book, they will think you're losing their time. If you ask yep. them to, uh, I don't know, start this project, they will think you're screwing up and you take away whatever the equity, the money and go, go away. So there's all these oh, like perfect. suspicions and it's very hard to work with poor people. So I'm trying to avoid sort of this type of negativity. Uh, it's not like setting stone yep. principle, but something I'm always reminded when I work with or face someone so not, or of, of that kind of I'm in Vienna. I have to enjoy these Viennese trees here. I'm getting ready for the San Tropez experience next week, Frank. Welcome everybody back to the messy middle. This is a, uh, we call this a July summer vacation edition. Um, just like great entrepreneurs, we never stop until we get bored or want to quit. So um, on those kind of uh, notes, we want to talk about life principles today and how principles kind of influence your decision making around what you work on, who you work with, and <clears throat> really how you decide to spend your time on your messy middle journey. Frank, did I butcher that? Or, or is that pretty accurate? No, no, that's good. I think, I mean, it's going to be a very, very personal, you know, there's no, there's nothing universal about our podcast. It's just us sharing our experience point of view and, you know, everybody will have different answers, but it's, but whatever different answers people have, you know, everybody has principles. And, um, and I, I can reflect maybe on basic one I have, like, it's not going to be as deep as Ray Dalio wrote about. Um, I think the first one I would have is inspired by, it actually makes sense. It's been, um, th there was a video recently by Veritasium, which I really love. Um, but I knew that before there was a cool website about trust. Um, and it's, it's based on the, it's based on, uh, Veritasium, Veritasium made, uh, made one recently, but there was a website we can share after about, uh, about like simulating trust and it's based on game theory. And the idea is what is trust. And, you know, to me, trust is the idea that you, you predict the outcome of something with someone you don't know. And there's a couple of things that happen. You know, people say, I will do X and then they do X and then that's great. Or they don't do X and they don't keep their word. And to me in business, your, your, you know, the word is very important. So to me, my, my strategy is actually the one that in the simulation is the one that works the most. And it works for everything from animals to countries is, uh, is the idea that I trust people by default, even if I never worked with them. And that opens to me a lot of opportunities. Um, but if they, you know, if they screw me over once, uh, then I don't trust them anymore. Um, and I like that principle. You, you do it once, and, and then after that, you, you kind of wait for what, what they're going to be doing. But it's, it's like, you know, I think it's called tip, tip for that, tip for that. Um, so that would be my first principle, which is by default, I trust anyone. Um, I think I have an extension of that, which is if anyone reached out to me, I call it the uh like the 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 the, the steve Wozniak principle if, if anyone comes to me and talk to me and ask me for anything i'll always take the time at one point to answer uh, unless it's uh you know some spam on my linkedin about selling me something um and i got that because one day i reached out to steve Wozniak at the time where he was not really famous outside of a couple of nerds and the guy took the time to reply to me and i always think like you know uh, and I see that too with uh, uh, even people like uh, Steve Case, you know, when you write an email, you will always answer really fast. Um, and so to me, again, like there's this thing of if someone reach out, I always try to reply. So it's like the symmetry with the other one. So these are my two basic principles, I think, of human interaction, like trying to be helpful, trying to, it's a little cheesy, but indeed, like, you know, uh, give back. Um, that being said, you know, I reply, but it doesn't mean I will say yes. I, I could say no, I'm too busy or, I've, you know, you, you have to protect yourself. Um, and, I, and the two other ones, you know, uh, Gabriel, I think the first one is I'd rather have a deal than no deal. To me, it's something I always, always think about. It's like, for example, if I want to create a startup, 
And it's really important for me that I create the startup. And I've got this guy who could be a great, or this girl could be a great co-founder. And I've got a way to do the deal that might not be as good as I wanted it for me. I will still do it because the, the goal is what matters. Um, so that's a, there's a different strategy for it. You can do king. But to me, I'm more about sharing and doing anything it takes for the company to, 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 to work. Uh, and the last one is always follow natural traction. You could have an idea, you could have a vision, but then somehow you keep going the other way. You, you have to make a pause, observe that, and be like, how can I surf that wave in a way that is still aligned with what I want to do? And so often I see startups who are really, really trying to do something and they totally ignore the natural out outcome and output they have. And, and I think you know that's a mistake, but that's personal. So that's it. These are like, I guess, my four core principles. Curious about yours, if you have any, maybe you don't have any. No, you're very strategic about your principles. Uh, I don't think I have like a set in stone or I can just have a set of rules to live life by right on top of my mind. There are things that I recall when I deal with specific situation and I, uh, I would think that <clears throat> this is the approach I handled in the past or this is the person who I want to be uh, and then deal with that situation at, at with the task at hand. Uh, one of the things I know for sure is, uh, I, I tend to follow things that I'm curious about. It's, it's not really a principle, but it's been a driver and something that, uh, was sort of a thing that put me where I am today, the curiosity and then the, uh, the, the saying yes to things. But interesting thing that you mentioned, Frank, which is the trust. I have issues with that because by default, I trust people, but the problem is when uh, they play me once, I'm still in that, uh, I'm giving them a lot of chances, like all, all the time. So this is more like, a, it's, not, it's not a principle, but it's like something I'm really struggling with. How do I, how do I, when do I say no? And I asked these questions in previous episodes, and uh, when you mentioned this. That's a great uh, question. Yeah. yeah. When, when do you say no? When do you when do you stop trusting people? Because my natural uh, principle or behavior is to 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 be like, yeah, let's do this. This sounds interesting. I think people have uh, interesting ideas. They all have stories. I want to trust those stories, and it's it's becoming really challenging for me. And it's been an issue. Uh, but I'm trying lately I mean, to sort don't, of rein that. Means you don't want to say no, right? It's not. It's not like you're being forced. It's not like you say yes when you know you want to say no. It's just you. You like to say yes. I think your issue is more when. Do, when do I? When do yeah. I? When I do I go back to my yes and say okay now it's a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, through this thinking and lately, I've realized that I have to somehow write down these uh, principles or rules Deals. because, yeah, because otherwise it's just dealing play playing by ear and it's. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be, to me, you know, based on a no, gut feeling. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. No, no I was just mm. going to say to me, a good trick is when you do deals like that, you just set up a deadline and you say, okay, and one month from now, we have another call and we reassess, you know, if it's a good idea or not. Yeah. So this way you, you put that in the, you know, the beginning of the term, which is like, okay, I'm going to start working on this thing. One month, two months from now, we have this call where, where I say we keep going or, or I'm done. So that's the way you work. Yeah, so but the, that's the thing. I have to write this down and and kind of uh, make it a rule of my life because otherwise I'm just playing by ear and trying to figure out things as as I go, but, which is I figure it is not it, a not a good thing, <laughs> especially if you're in the in the messy middle, having sort of no principles, no written principles. It's it makes things complicated. So it's almost like an algorithm that I need to create. Yeah. And I started like uh, right. just like recently started reading Benjamin Franklin. Uh, biography by Walter Isaacson. There's so many things that I would love to adopt and, and uh, kind of start to practice uh, in my life. Uh, yeah, and yeah. inside the biography, I mean, the nice thing of being in a messy middle is you already have a lot of lessons learned. So I think it would be nice to just look back and being like, what, yeah. what principle uh, what what principle could have maybe prevented me to, to or helped me to have a better outcome? Yeah, have to be more strategic about it. And I like how you put like your four or five principles. I think everyone has to sort of write this algorithm of their life and it's a, just it's true it's funny i always assume people have them i i, I know i develop them and i i develop them because one day i had a haha -ha moment mm -hmm. and then i keep repeating to people this thing because these haha -ha moment they 
this principle looks stupid, but they, they are, I forgot another one I did. Uh, it's a stupid one, but it's a useful one, which is called the, is it a fuck yeah? And, and the uh -huh. principle is just, you know, if, if the thing is not a fuck yeah and it's a ma, then a ma means no. So that's the and thing, I, I, I kind of have that like, same, no, go, like, yeah, <laughs> I've been anyway, following so. that same principle in a way, but it's not like a core rule that I'm always by default, aha, this is my principle. It's situational based when I come up with like situation and I'm looking for excuses or reasons to accept, say yes or yeah. say no, then I'll be like, okay, it's not hell, hell yes, and yeah. it's probably no, but it's, yeah, I agree. I have to, but, uh, and again, they can, uh, they can, they seems like they conflict with each other, but they don't, for example, the fuck yeah would be, should I hire that person or should I? I keep working that person because uh, so it's not like i'm making a deal with a person it's something where it's like i'm making a move mm -hmm. uh, and if and if i can make any move should i make that move or this other move and, uh, and sometimes you you might it's better to make no move. the a deal is better than no deal is when you're into a negotiation so for example an exit or something like that you know if you're in an exit and you only have one option it's bad of course you want a second option so to me for a good example would be i'm talking to one guy for an exit i'd rather have two so I'd rather have a bad deal with a second guy than, than no deal at all, because then I have two, which is better than one, you know, and even if the other one is crappy, I can still somehow leverage it, you know, so so, so that's what I meant by, by this one. It doesn't mean I will sign on anything. <laughs> so so I definitely have uh, principles. Um, not only do I have principles, I have tracked my, my life in a way with these five-year plans. So it's, again, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a Stalin inspiration, um, but, uh, or a Mao five-year plan. Um, but I started doing them probably when I was around 25 years old. And um, I ha I'm now on the second, I'm almost done with this five-year plan, 28 years old. So I have one year left on this, one year left in this current five-year plan. And this year is actually, called uh originally it was the year of no fear but frank made fun of me um, so it's actually called year. so um and my kind of principles and and i spent a little time actually just looking at the five-year plan and sort of the history of it for the last few minutes uh while you guys were talking so apologies if i you know wasn't listening to a word you said but i wanted to go look at my principles i'm kidding i was listening um cold outreach I love to just outreach cold to anybody um, that will provide value or that I think is cool. And, and I find a reason to connect with them. A lot of people are like, why do you do that? Well, for me, it's, I just find cool deals, cool opportunities, cool projects through cold outreach. And I also met my wife through cold outreach. Um, you know, uh, Cause they say, well, how'd you end up meeting a Russian model in New York? I'm like, well, number one, you're in New York. It's not hard because that's where the models are. But number two, uh, I had a secret weapon, um, is, uh, the cold outreach. And then the conversion rate of reaching out to Russian models on Facebook or you don't have to answer that. You can call your lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely a hundred percent. So there's, uh, while Gabriel was talking, I was thinking about some of the things that I, as I said, like coming up situational base uh principles so one of the things that i really believe in and i think it's uh, i value that as a skill or as a trait in other people it's uh, there's no substitute for hard work and i really True. try to be that person like if uh, i don't subscribe to this work smarter you know it's you have to you have to get shit done to get shit done you cannot just like go around and yes, coming uh, from a society where people are used uh, to slacking uh, and not doing things yeah, and someone else like the government pays whatever it, that that sucks it's another it's another principle i forgot but i i like to think about it especially after crypto which is i love physics i love studying physics and so to me sometimes i have a hard time understanding physics but i i do i can grasp it but if i cannot understand someone's speech or someone's life or someone's way of working I know it's fishy, you know? So I understand someone who says, it's really hard, I'm working really hard, I'm doing these things, you know, I'm, I'm not spending too much money. But someone who has like, don't worry, everything's okay, and travels a lot and seems to have a lot of money and throw buzzwords I don't understand with a business that seems mysterious, I know I have to run away from that because I know it's a scam. 
Um, yeah. So I agree. It's like to me, you know, if it's too good to be true, or it, or if it makes no sense and you cannot comprehend it, but you you kind of want the opportunity because you're seduced by, oh my god, it's gonna be we're gonna make so much money or whatever. Then that's it's like a, I've got a lot of red alerts going in. Yeah, my there's mind, uh, where, I know, where I know if something is up, it's up. There's if another. Someone cannot, if someone mm -hmm. cannot express very clearly what they do or what they want to do, um, and and funny enough, it happens a lot. It um, happens, but I, I wouldn't judge people on that that much because being in the messy middle, life, uh, I realize yeah. that uh, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing in terms of, okay, I'm in this messy middle, I'm doing a couple different things. Yeah. So I wouldn't but judge them precisely that. on that. But like, as you said, using words, like big words, terminology that not, not a lot of people understand, it's typically weird red flag. And then also... Uh, if it looks as a as a too good to be true kind of thing, it's probably yeah. uh, not not a good yeah, thing. I, again, I'm not sure. I mean, if I talk to you or if anyone talks to me and I say what's happening, I'm very clear. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm working on NFT, so it's a company I've been launching, and I and I work on that. You know, cut like maybe uh, 20, 30 percent of my time at the moment, and I'm launching something else. I'm exploring, and I'm not sure what I do. And for a lot of people, my pitch is bad because they don't like that pitch. But for the few who like it and who understand it, then you have a great relation. Well, yeah. sure. A lot of people don't uh, what understand. What most people do is they 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 just I don't know. They just make everything great, like a like a pitch. But to me, to me, I I think Paul Graham posted about that recently. Where I forgot the the term he used. It was an English term. When when oh, he said there's nothing worse. Yeah, yeah. That, that. I, I read that but, one. But, <laughs> that yeah, sc like screeners or something. Some, like yeah, something about it was, uh, the, scener, the, screeners, the something. Was, the, the term was when someone... Seensters. Seensters, yes. Work. The people who pretend Seensters. that they do X. Seensters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, it's like they, they're like, it's like, oh, I'm doing this AI thing and we're using transformers and whatever, but you know the guy is doing nothing. Uh, yeah. uh, and you can, you can feel these kind of people when they, they're going to, they get better and better at pitching because they get corrected. <laughs> so the output they have is the same as someone who would work. But, but when you when you know enough you, you you can you can feel them and you can detect them but if you don't know enough you're going to be sucked into nonsense it's uh you know it's like it's like Linus quote which is you know it's easy to talk it's hard to code like show me the code and i yeah. and every time i go back to code it's always the same i'm like oh i've got this simple idea and then i'm going to spend three days just trying to reconfigure my my python to work with cuda and uh, and, and my and everything to work just to to be able to say hello world you know yeah <laughs> it's like, um, so I so so, back to Gabriel. Yeah, I didn't yeah. finish my principles. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. you know, being in Vienna in it's the fine, hotel. It's fine, it's fine. So you're which meditating. Is very, which, is, which is very uh, historic hotel. The internet is in the 18th century uh, speed. It's the 18th century internet. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's just a little <laughs> slow. So Grand what Bell I was made it. <laughs> so what I was saying was, I like to always work with most connected people, not mm -hmm. necessarily who's building the product. But I mm -hmm. have to have a few of those people on my team. Um, and before the internet crashes again, I'll give you my last three. Always, always make the ask. So always ask for more. The worst that can happen is they say no. So like, meaning like, like invest in my company. And like, don't be an idiot. Like you're not yeah. going to be like, well, invest in my company, nothing back to me. But always ask the question. The worst that can happen is somebody says no. Just going back to Frank's point is no, it's no, nice. No. So I'm going to reach out. I, want to, I just want to finish the list sure, sure, sure. so that if I Thanks. die here with this internet, <laughs> you guys can continue with me without me. Um, take time to enjoy your life. One day you'll be dead and you'll be alive a lot of a sh uh, you'll be dead a lot longer than you've ever been alive. And um, don't work with people who renege. So, um, if if they agree to a deal and the deal changes, um, they will never really agree to a deal. Um, so, and, and this is mostly with co-founders. Um, mm. It's not necessarily with with like acquirers because the deal does change. So those are my principles, and Very hopefully good. it actually went through. Uh, there's another one that I like. I'm going to butcher this, but uh, I think Jack Ma says it. It's very hard to work with poor people or something along those lines. And again, I'm, I'm not talking, I'm talking about my kind of previous life where even now when I meet friends that are stuck in that, uh, stuck in that sort of mindset, it's very hard to, to, uh, 
work with them or inspire them or, or give them something that you can both benefit, like starting a project, starting a company, because they have this poor mindset, not necessarily financially poor, but they just think that you're going to trick them for, for something. Like if you oh, tell yeah. them, read a so book, they will think you're losing their time. If you ask yep. them to, uh, I don't know, start this project, they will think you screw them up and you take away whatever, the equity, the money and go, go away. So there's all these oh, like perfect. suspicions and it's very hard to work with poor people. So I'm trying to avoid sort of this type of negativity. Uh, it's not like setting stone principle, but something I'm always reminded when I work with or face someone so it's not poor, of that so kind it's of not scale. Necessary. So it's not poor people from like the actual literal definition of poor people. It's, I want to, you want to work with people that the rich that poor that thing. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have the, the mindset right? of a, the of mindset. A, yeah, 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 exactly. Not an abundance of a mindset. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, listening to Gabrielle, I, I'm wondering, it's not really a principle, but it's something I do. So maybe it is um, where it's almost the opposite <laughs> of Gabrielle, which is don't reach out to anyone. Uh -huh. The reason is because it's because I I'm, I'm really really worried about burning my network even though I don't really activate it for a while. So I like to reach out to my friends randomly. When even now I don't really I don't even talk to my friends lately because I I hate to not have a clear story to tell. And so to me, I'm at least I'm waiting for kind of having something that makes sense that I'm very, very convinced about and that I start to have a little bit of momentum and I'm starting to work on it. Yeah. Where I know because as soon as I do that, I know it's still going to be there for at least six months, and then I can reach out to people and you know. But but to me, it's like I don't want to reach out and be like, hey, like I'm you know, I have no idea about what I do. What do you think? Like I, I uh, you know, I, it's really hard. And uh, don't misquote me. I didn't say. I, I'm, reach I am, out I'm not misquoting you. I'm I'm, I'm so, quoting you. I I didn't I didn't say, I didn't say reach <laughs> what out. What I mean is okay, okay, sure. I'm not misquoting Re you. Yeah, what it's I mean is different. Uh, so there's a time I, I, to reach out and there's a time to, to, you know, to, yeah. to kind of uh, disappear. Yeah. As the bird said, <laughs> you know, there, there, yes, there's a time to reach out and there's a time to disappear time to, you know, turn, right. turn, 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 exactly. but like, exactly. like Frank's right. <laughs> Frank's right. But Frank, you should call your friends more often because they do miss you. And the problem is if you don't call them so often and you leave it, to reaching out when you only have something to talk about and you have a story oh, to no, tell. No, 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 I don't do that. I mean, you, you know I never do that. Yeah. Like, so no, I'm I know a, you I'm don't a... do that. But I'm saying I don't want somebody to listen to our podcast and be like, you know no, what? No, that's fair, that's fair. Fuck it. I'm not going to reach out to uh, Teddy I know, until I have something it's to tell like I've got this friend, I've got this friend I haven't talked in years and we're like, let's hang out and let's talk. And then it's like, he's in Hawaii. And there's like a 12 hours difference between Hawaii yeah, and yeah. Estonia. And it's yeah. like, it's 9 p.m. And I'm like, I'm going to call you. But then I'm like, oh, shit, this dinner I forgot about. And so anyway, so it's uh, just... I feel like I'm reaching well to people in Europe right now. And when I'll be in the US, I'll catch up with your side. Just the time difference doesn't really help. But Yeah, more similar in that we'll regard right, to, right. to your uh, kind of approach, Frank. In my case, it's even more conservative. I'm like, uh, let my work speak about and reach mm -hmm. out to people. And then they reach out to me yeah. kind of I think that's thing. Idiotic. And I don't, I don't reach out. I think that's stupid, guys. I think you should reach out. But, I, but I'm an extrovert. So if I don't reach out... Then I feel like my life is over. Yeah. Okay. I like people. Uh, I'm trying to there's... be dramatic. I'm in Vienna. You know, it's it's. No, no. no, no I will I, certainly I, reach I... out, but in terms of work, I don't want to just reach out. Hey, I'm working on this before I yeah. have actually something substantial to show. I feel like yeah. but almost the, like uh, imposter to yeah. to do that. In, yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. To me, to me, the nice thing though is as soon as you reach out with an ask, so you need to have the ask. To me, it's super easy. It's like, hey, can you? And my ask is never, never an introduction. I hate when people come out and be like, uh, as you said, that like I call them social social vampires, where some guy you vaguely met five years ago reach out to you and say, hey, Frank or Gabriel, like or Teddy, I see you're connected to that person. Could you make an intro because I'm raising money for blah blah. It's like that's the worst thing you can do. To me, at least the best thing you could do would be like, hey, sorry, didn't talk for a while. I'm working on that thing. Can we just do a quick call, tell you what it is? And if you have any ideas for me, I'll take it. And if not, we would love to catch up. Um, and I think that's fine, you know, because if someone does that to me, I'll be happy to to help. Um, but I, I wouldn't ask for an intro without knowing what the project is or what the thing is. You know, it's better to let the person to say, if you have anyone in your network you think I could talk to or could help, and then let's do it. But but forcing it to someone, it's uh, sold too, too much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. No, you have to, like, to me, I, to me, maybe some other people, it's it's natural, but uh, 
It's, I, it's I had a too... weird one I can tell you recently, which is a friend or a guy I met like a couple of years ago, and he reached out to me because he works with some family office who wanted to put $20 million on the France company. And I was like, fuck, because if I don't do the intro, I feel bad because it's a big sum of money. Um, but at the same time, I kind of feel forced to, to do the intro, which I don't like. And so I ping my friend. He never replied. He's too busy now because the company is doing really, really well. Pinged another friend. And I'm like, what do I do with that? And, you know, my friend's like, don't worry. You know, everybody's busy. But it's like, I felt like this one, you, you're forced to pass the message. Um, but, you know, yeah. sometimes you're not. And then There's... then it sucks. You have to you have to tell people like, look, I, you know, I, I don't do intros like that. Like the best I can do is if I think the thing is good, then I, I can pass the intro. But I, I'm not making a direct intro. I'll just say, hey, that guy reached out. You know. Yeah. There's but, uh, another uh, another Africa. one uh, related to never... commit commitments, which is uh, it tend to be my principle, but I think it got like lost in the in the world where I started interacting with more people, uh, which is uh, following through on your commitments. Uh, yeah. When I say I'm gonna do something, I'll I'll definitely do it. But then at one point you start facing like different characters. Someone may be forgetful, for someone may be uh, ADHD and doesn't really follow through. And then you, let's say, uh, you know, this example where you talk with someone and they agree you're going to go for a coffee next week and then you just, you yeah. don't reach out and that person doesn't reach out and this person maybe forgot, but maybe he or she is not responsible or doesn't follow on his yep. or her commitments and then you think that that's kind of the way it should be and then it's also comfortable for you so you'll start not yeah. really following through on your commitments i think that's yep. important one for me yeah uh and i really lack, value like that a, in people lack of respect um, to me it's a lack yeah. of respect it's like if you if you say something to me it's the opposite like for example when when teddy we say we're working on something even though i don't want to do it sometime i'm like i'm too tired like i have to commit because it's the same as yeah. saying we're going to go to the gym together Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. so to me, the social pressure works really well on me. Actually, it's something helpful. It's easier sure. for me to yeah. convince myself with someone else in the loop than to convince myself alone because I always find an excuse to 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 kind of not commit. So to me, I work better with a team dynamic. Um, but uh, but sometimes, like I've got example in the past where someone would commit, but then have his excuse because whatever family and things like that, and I can I kind of let let it slip. But but I think now that I think of it, it's like. There should be no excuse if someone give their words and commit to something. They, they, whatever life, you know, it's fine. It's fine one times or twice, but I think after that, exactly. you, you just yeah. have to accept it's not going to work. And I maybe I've been a little naive on that. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I I agree with you both on this front. Of, um, it's funny, Teddy. You mentioned the the where it's like, yeah, let's grab coffee next week, and neither of the people get back to him. And it's like the friend who's always like, you run into them. And they're like, let's hang out. And you know you're never going to hang out with them because yeah. you don't like them and they don't like you. But you're doing like the natural <laughs> social thing of saying like, let's catch up. And you're like, you walk away and you're like, that fucker. Yeah. I'm never going to see him. So I I agree. It's nice to run along with the principle to show up. Even if you're like freaking out. You're like, okay, I don't want to go to this. This is not going to be a good thing. Because we know people who will say they'll commit. They'll commit up into the minute and they you show up to the place and like, you know what? My car broke down. I'm not gonna be here. And like yeah. maybe they're broke... it's actually rare to find these people. It's it's the same as talent versus like honestly, yeah. someone who's not good, but someone who's motivated and committed, it's any any day it's better than if you know than someone who's really good and just keep disappearing. It's a good point. Oh my god. Agreed. Agreed. And and I think that fits in with, you know, a, a principle that you know that we didn't mention but just like work work with the best people that you have access to but not the best in the thinking of like they're an a plus player but the ones that are just going to get the stuff done because you know like I, how many times have we worked with people that might not fit a perfect role but because they can just get it done early and this is early stage i'm not talking about like um you know putting rivets on the uh, boeing 737 max because clearly they didn't get that done properly either but um so <laughs> like a like anyone like can do it yeah anybody can do that clearly <laughs> they hired some great people if you, put, if you can put an ikea table together you're you're you can work you, at doing it seems you so, can work so at doing. yeah <laughs> but I, I i um i wanted to to like think about something here when we when, when we're applying these principles have we seen it where 
maybe some of the principles we have are holding us back. Mm. I want to add. I want to add one other principle, which I think is important, which is sure. Don't answer my question. Things are no, no, but it also <sighs> answers your question, which is about when things are bad. And yeah. when things are bad, my principle <laughs> is to at one point I need to voice it to my co-founder, and that might kill the business, or we might survive that and find find a new deal. Uh, sometimes it kills it. So sometimes to go back to what you say it could hold me back, but. But I'm like, it's a principle I have, which is yep. if somehow we drifted to a point where the deal we had initially is not the same today for whatever reason, and I don't feel good, and I feel like I have no passion, and uh, whatever these things that could kill the startup, because it, these are the things that kill startups, co-founder dynamic, then I'm like, we need to talk, you know, it's like, it's like a relationship. And, and to me, whenever that happens, I'm always committed to, to have this very hard conversation. It's another principle. But to your point, that may, that may have killed a bunch of deals, but... I'm okay with yeah. it because I know my, my feeling is if I don't do it, it will be, be dead anyway. So have the hard conversations when they're most needed. I think a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people will, a you lot kind of, of run away from them naturally, but at one point you're like, I can't, you know, and, and then you just have right. to, and what happened often is people already knew that. So it's not like, it's like, yeah, I knew that and I couldn't voice it. You know, it's like, yeah. 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 I and think it's hard, that, and it's hard because you end up, you end up with these calls where like at the end, it's not good, but then then conversation comes back and then, you know, if you survive this thing, it's great. It's great for co-founders. I mean, there's, there's a reason we call those principles and uh, having this algorithm or set of rules to live life by. And if they're holding you back, that's there for a reason, because the same way they give yeah. you wings and opportunities, it, it's also their purpose to save you from potentially yes. doing something wrong. Yeah. But I, I think as, as everything changes and we change as humans, we somewhat change our view yeah. of the world. It is okay to review your principles every once in a while. If you face that same uh, roadblock a couple times and you have to uh, break your principle and you don't want to do it, but you see that one time, two times, three times okay. it's against you, then it's okay to change it. It's okay to yeah. reframe it, I guess. Uh, so it's okay for the principles to hold you back, I think. But be, yeah, be, no, have no. the courage to change them and re reassess them. Yep. No, no, principles are general ideas, general guideline, um, which to me are good in times where you often get lost also, you know, not only in the messy middle, but also in the messy startup and, you know, messy scale up and messy, well, everything's messy. And at least I feel like the, the principles are something that, that are like uh, a compass for you and that kind of came out of your personal experience. But, uh, but again, you, you learn, you learn when to apply them and when not to apply them. It could be principle at the early stage that makes sense and that don't make sense at the later stage. And you just need to, to have a different set of principles based at what stage you're at. Yes. And, and, I, and, and I think you need to be malleable with your principles when you're applying them as well. Even if you might have experienced that in a startup before or a project before and have done it like, you know, addressing yeah, every startup different. I mean, like but every time I do a startup, it's so different. Yeah. Every time. So, so different. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, our, our kind of consensus here is everyone should have some set of principles. Um, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be Ray Dalio ones that you can manufacture, put in a book. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff at Bridgewater capital that, um, have been done. Yeah, it, it's funny. Yeah, be careful of that too. I guess that's another principle, which is don't follow people like the the. I love the one with Jack Dorsey. You know, always was about let's make the company very transparent and blah blah. The big cultural principle, and then he was the first one to just do everything under the radar and like you know just just kill oh, people yeah. in the back when he could. It's uh, <laughs> it's usually people public principles are not the one they they really apply to themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's like somebody who's like super, real, super religious who's probably um, doing oh, some yeah. really crazy things that come out in the news. <laughs> yeah, or, so. or any French philosopher from the early 20th century would write entire books about how you should behave in life and just live the exact opposite way. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the existentialists are a good example of that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just realized there's a chat on the side of you guys. Is. Shot it. Yeah. yeah, did That's not fine. realize that before. <laughs> All good. Um, good. I cool. think we have a quote for the date. 
it's Frank's week for the quote. I think I have one oh. from the poor oh. Charles Almanac. Have, okay, I'm, okay. So yeah. Teddy, Teddy. You have. Yeah. So it says from which one? Uh, poor Richard Salmanac by Benjamin Franklin. Poor Richard Salmanac, yeah, 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 that's a good one. Good one. Um, it says he that would live in peace and at ease must not speak all he knows or judge all he sees. So it's basically stay away from debates. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I can tell, you can, I can tell you can. Have suffered like a, is that after he talked to Tesla or? Or I don't know. Oh, sorry, it's it's Benjamin Franklin, or it's Franklin? yeah, it's Benjamin yeah. Franklin. It's Benjamin Franklin. Sorry, sorry. So that's after he talked to George Washington. My bad. <laughs> I mean, it's it's probably one way to see that for sure. Uh, yeah. That's that's interesting. Or, or, I wonder or, what or he had Alexander in mind. Alexander Hamilton his... after like Alexander Hamilton and Jefferson and everything and how. I oh, know it's uh, Ben Franklin had like an amazing life. Like he invented the the uh, uh, that in English like the the lightning uh, road. Yeah, yep. uh, I'm so fascinated by him. I never got him a chance to read or listen a, to his book. He wrote a he wrote a book about the 100 ways to say you're drunk, or something yeah. like that. I think was yep. really and funny. The, and also the first was it the eyeglasses? It was eyeglasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the um, monoc monocle or something. Monocle, like that. and then yeah. the um, the first firehouse in Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what's what's oh, no, always this guy, crazy? This guy was amazing. He was a great entrepreneur. He was uh, I yeah. think running a brewery or something like that, and and. Uh, yeah, no, no, cool. We love Ben. Like, well, and, I, and he had a lot of fun in France. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. He Chasing was. the ladies. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, no, was. That's uh, yeah, yeah. There's all those controversies. I walk this, by his this house. This guy's that amazing life. Can you imagine? You're an entrepreneur. You're a scientist. You're you're you invent a country. You're you're. Yeah, like, he was a lot of things for off. sure. Yeah, it's like wild. Yeah, yeah. The founding. Great. I think the founding brothers were a very interesting group of individuals. Oh, yeah. So, which is, a, which is a good book that everybody should pick up, Founding Brothers. I like that book. Read it a long time ago. Right. Uh, so, until next week. Yes. Bye. Bye.